Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to uh, yield uh, five minutes to the representative from Virginia, Thelma Drake, who represents Norfolk and America's Navy. Gentlewoman from Virginia is recognized for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and thank you, Congressman Johnson, for your service to our nation. The past few years have been increasingly difficult ones for the American people, for our military families, and most importantly, to our service members in harm's way. Our troops have done everything that has been asked of them and more. Their sacrifices are unimaginable to many of us here on this floor. Through it all, the only thing that they have asked is for our support through our words, through our prayers, and most importantly, through our actions. During my two visits to Iraq, the question that I encountered from service members was, what are they saying back home? They watch C-SPAN, and I know with certainty that they are watching us right now. The resolution that we are discussing today is non-binding and therefore merely symbolic within the Beltway. The driving force behind it has more to do with the situation in Washington than it does the situation in Baghdad. Yet half a world away, this resolution will have demoralizing effects for those men and women who we have asked to go into battle. It is important for the American people watching this debate to know that this plan is currently underway. The 2nd Brigade of the 82nd Airborne Division moved into Baghdad nearly a month ago. The 4th Brigade of the 1st Infantry Division is deploying this month with three more brigades set to arrive soon. That means that we are not here today to discuss whether or not the troops will go. We are discussing what message the troops will hear from us when they get there. Like many of my colleagues, I am concerned about the current situation in Iraq. Last April, I witnessed the election of the Iraqi speaker. Since that time, the Iraqis have failed to make acceptable progress, stabilizing their nation and strengthening their democratic institutions. Many of us have concerns about the plan. Will Prime Minister Maliki live up to the commitments that he made in November? Does this plan get the most out of the 21 trained and equipped Iraqi battalions deployed outside of Baghdad? These are reasonable questions and ones I believe are within the scope of Congress to discuss and resolve. I appreciate debate and the American people appreciate debate. But it is important to remember that the American people have sent us here to solve problems. Unfortunately, this resolution makes no attempt to solve the problems in Iraq. If Congress believes that the President's plan can be approved on, then Congress has the responsibility to work with the Commander-in-Chief to ensure that the Iraqis are meeting stringent benchmarks and are living up to their commitments. This resolution is best defined by what it lacks. This resolution fails to include the proposal for a bipartisan panel tasked with outlining rigorous benchmarks and making sure they are met so that our troops may return home in victory. This resolution fails to specifically protect the funding that our troops need to execute the mission. This resolution fails to condemn the terrorists and insurgents who target both our troops and Iraqis. And most importantly, it fails to reiterate that victory should always be the goal. We were told this week would provide an opportunity for every member to go on the record, yet the majority has not allowed a Republican alternative that would protect funding for the troops. How do the American people know where their representatives in Washington stand on funding for our troops when the majority won't allow that debate? The American people are anxious, but they want progress, not defeat. They want to see their elected officials working together to ensure success on behalf of our troops. Simply inserting a sentence saying you support the troops is not enough when your actions say otherwise. The consequences of retreat would be dire. This is understood by our allies as well as our regional partners who have spoken up against withdrawal. 
according to the iraq national intelligence estimate it would result in an immediate increase in sectarian violence and genocide and has the potential to destabilize the entire region for decades the instability in the middle east has repeatedly resulted in the deaths of american citizens and service members in places as far apart as beirut and yemen new york city and the pentagon a retreat at this point in time if i could have thirty more seconds gentlemen recognize her gentlemen recognize her thirty additional thank you a retreat at this point in time could down the road necessitate our troops returning to iraq that is much more dangerous than the one they left i truly believe that the united states has the most formidable military in the world not solely because of our technological and tactical advantages but because our men and women in uniform fight in the name of a free and democratic people they fight on behalf of freedom for all knowing they have the full support and confidence of the american people when we take that support away we strip our troops of the greatest weapon in the fight against tyranny i ask my colleagues not to vote for this resolution but to once again General work Simon together Clark. thank you mr speaker